that as he meets you upon the day of judgment, you might say to him, my good and faithful servant, here is your reward. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two. Yeah? Wanna take a minute? Woo. That was a new brother who's just come to the faith. He's just become a Christian. So just to prove to you guys that people are becoming Christians because of what we're doing, there was an atheist Jew who's just become a Christian. Thanks be to God. And our videos helped him to make that journey. I wanted to ask you something about the Christian faith specifically. Okay. Because because I've I'm re I've recently converted to Christianity. Congratulations for making the best and the worst decision of your life. I know. Atheist <laughs> then Christian. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Uh, maybe. Yeah. I don't think so. Um, yeah. No, but I, I wanted to ask. So I've, I've I've watched some of your videos and you you mentioned uh, like that there are like set what is it like seven things that you must that you like disciples of Christ. Like, yeah. Do seven disciplines. Just, right, and I was just wondering like what they are and how they do. Them. Right. Like, yeah. It's still, I have still like a lot of like bad habits and like strongholds and yeah. like, you know different like thought patterns. And yeah. Stuff, and it's just, like, so 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 let me let me let me let me. It's good that you think about thoughts in terms of stronghold, because the heart of Christian spirituality is the spirituality of repentance. Yeah. JC, are we good for the sound? Because I've only got the one microphone. Shall we move over here a bit? Okay. So, so let, let's talk about the seven disciplines. Firstly, I need to, I, I want to just adjust your perception of it. The seven disciplines are not things that you must do. As in, they're, they're not related to your salvation. They are, they're, so they're not what we would call primary issues, because whether you do them or you don't do them, is, is not something that in and of itself gets you salvation. Sure. Salvation is a gift. Yeah, exactly. The, the crucifixion, resurrection, yeah. okay. that's the, the an incarnation and yeah. that kind of thing. Right. Worshipping the Trinity, all of that jazz. But the seven disciplines are markers of a Christian lifestyle. They are a way of making your Christian walk real to your everyday life. So I'm gonna go into them. Are you ready? Yeah, and then you can watch this video as a reference. So the first one is prayer. Now, the thing that's important about prayer is that it is sincere, i.e. that it is done in spirit and in truth, and that it is done regularly. Now, what regularly looks like for your life is going to be different from what regularly looks for my life. At the moment, I'm trying to commit myself to a discipline of praying three times, uh, sorry, every three hours, not doing very well, right? But you might be in a work situation or a life situation where you can only pray once a day. Some Christians have like a holy hour each day where they pray and they read the Bible and they do it for a full hour, right? And they use contemplative prayer. And there's different kinds of prayer. There's contemplative prayer, meditative prayer. I don't really know. Yeah. The there's intercessionary prayer. There is, you know, the, the liturgical prayer. There's different kinds of prayer. What, what is important, what is at the essence of all of these is regularity and sincerity or spirit and truth, praying and worshipping in spirit and truth. Because as a Christian, you're now a priest. So you offer your soul and your body as a living sacrifice unto God. Okay? And your prayers are part of your living sacrifice. So prayer's got to be regular, it's got to be sincere. Okay. It could be three times a day. Some Christians do morning, noon and night. Some do every three hours, some do every four hours. Some do once a day for an hour. You get the picture. Yeah. Second discipline. I know it feels like I'm laboring each one, but it's just to give you a picture. No, no, no I, I, want, I want to. Se second one is um, fasting. Christ didn't say if you fast. He said when you fast. Okay. So it is a given that a Christian should fast. Mm -hmm. Now the church has, has, has had traditionally times of fasting. So the Didache talks about fasting on Wednesdays and Fridays. Hopefully JC will put up the reference for you. I'll encourage him to. Um, Christ himself fasted for 40 days in the desert. And I know a Christian who has gone without food for 40 days. It's been proven that you can do it. It's been proven that you can do it. There was a guy who did it for a gimmick just to prove that it could, it could be done. Yeah, he stuck, himself in a goal, he stuck himself in a glass box. He was a magician, a street magician. And he, and he went without food for 40 days. That is insane. Yeah. 
So it is, it is possible. That's called the Jesus fast. Okay. It's the harshest of all the fasts. Don't do it until you've spoke to a doctor. <laughs> yeah. Right? Okay. But then there's Didache, the, what the Didache says about, you know, fasting on uh, uh, Wednesdays and Fridays. Mm -hmm. The church traditionally called the, the church to fast in Lent and Advent, which is 40 days before Christmas and 40 days before Easter Sunday. Yeah? Um, modern Advent is truncated, so it's shorter than 40 days. So I would encourage you to fast for 40 days before those times. Now, what does fasting mean? It must mean a reduction in your calories. It must mean a reduction in your calories. We can't be like the Muslims who say they're fasting during Ramadan and the calorie count goes up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kind of hypocrisy. I'll yeah. starve myself for 12 hours, but then I'll well, actually, actually eat more eat food. More yeah, food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so your, your, your calories have to go down. Okay. Now, that could mean you just have one meal a day. It could mean that you fast from when you wake up until a certain hour in the day. You choose. You've got to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Yeah? You, you, you could do the one meal a day. During Lent and Advent, traditionally, Christians went vegan. So learn what it means to be vegan and during Advent and Lent do it, yeah? And, and we usually add on to that, this idea of fasting each day up to a certain hour, okay? The point is that you're fasting regularly. The thing to remember though is that fasting isn't a diet. Fasting has to be about prayer. If you're fasting and not praying, why are you fasting? So you should fast and pray. Those things go together, like horses and carriages. You, you can't have one without sure. the other. Yeah, okay. All right? Um, now, it's a package deal. It's a package deal. If you, the carriage, the fasting is the equivalent of the carriage. Sure, okay. You can have a horse without fasting, so you can pray without fasting, right, but you, but you can't, can't fast without praying. Yeah, okay. Right. The third discipline is almsgiving. Now, do you know what I mean by almsgiving? Is that like, uh, I don't know, like donating money, giving or time? Charitable like giving. Charitable. Yeah. So, charitable giving is a must for a Christian. And again, charitable giving has to be done in secret, right? You don't make a boast about it. We're not like the Muslims who make a big show and tell about how they do zakat so that everyone will think that they're virtuous and praiseworthy. When you do almsgiving, try to keep it a secret as much as you can. Obviously, within the realms of telling the truth. Yeah? Someone asks you, do you give to charity? You've got to say yes. Yeah? And other people may applaud you for giving to charity but you don't applaud yourself for giving to charity. And so you give to charity in terms of your money or your time. Rich people can give both. Poor people have to do a trade-off whether they're giving the money or the time, yeah? So lots of Christians who are middle income usually give money because they don't have the time. The important thing is, again, that it is regular, that it's rhythmic, that it's integrated into the rhythm of your life. And I would encourage you to focus all of those energies on Christian charities, Christian organizations, Christian causes. Don't use your almsgiving in time or money to support secular or secular liberal organizations. Use it to support Christian institutions, Christian organizations, Christian charities, Christian causes. Because we've got to build up the church. Yeah? Now many of those charities help people quite liberally. So you could help tier fund because it's a Christian organization. And by helping Tier Fund, you'll help anyone who's poor. Sure, like in, but indirectly. Right? Indirectly. Yeah. But don't directly help non-Christian organizations or charities. Yeah, because many Christian charities and organizations are doing that already. They need your support. Do it regularly. So that's three disciplines down. Fourth discipline, study of the faith. Now listen to what I said carefully there. I said study of the faith, not study of the Bible. Now it goes without saying that study of the faith must include study of the Bible. But don't just read the Bible, read the commentaries connected to the Bible, the, particularly the commentaries of the church fathers. Read books about the Bible, read books about church history, read books about Christian spirituality, read books about Christianity and politics, read books about Christianity, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So read widely about the faith and of course read the Bible. Yeah? yeah, And again, it's important to do it regularly. Yeah. So I would encourage you to, like, in terms of studying the faith, mm -hmm. to try and do it weekly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can watch YouTube videos of apologists. Yeah. Study the faith weekly. Mm -hmm. In terms of your almsgiving, I'd encourage you to do it in the rhythm by which you live. 
So if you get paid monthly, give monthly. If you get paid weekly, give weekly. If you get paid daily, give daily. Yeah? So do it in the rhythm by which you live. So study the faith. Study all aspects of the faith. Yeah? The fifth discipline is self-examination. Now what I mean by self-examination, it's a, 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 an apostolic injunction to examine ourselves to see if we remain in the faith. Because if you're studying the faith, you're going to be learning things, new ideas, new concepts, new categories, new nuances. Yeah? Like, as you might even in this conversation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah? Incidentally, the seven disciplines are also seven themes to study in your first seven times of studying. Sure. Study each one of the themes. So, the, this, this is about taking a time out from the world. Turn off your phone, turn off your TV, put yourself in a room, turn out the light and look inward. Look into your mind, look into your soul, look into your emotions. And, and like a garden, cultivate it. Prune off what needs to be pruned, fertilize what needs to be fertilized, cultivate that which will bear fruit in your inner self. Those kind of habits that will make you a better Christian. That self-examination is fundamentally important because without that, without self-examination, there is no spiritual growth. Yeah? Because you learn all these things, but what's head knowledge if you don't do the self-examination? If head knowledge is the seed, self-examination is turning over the ground so and planting the seeds. Now, the sixth discipline, evangelism. Every Christian must evangelize. But not every Christian needs to evangelize in the same way. I evangelize here in the park. You might evangelize just with your friends and your family. You might evangelize more at this early stage in your faith by just saying to people, look, I've become a Christian. Or if they offer you food and you decline because you're fasting, and they go, why, why, why don't you want this lovely cake? You can go, because I'm fasting. Why are you fasting? That's starving yourself. Well, no, we Christians don't see it that way. And you just explain what you know. That's all you need to do. Explain what you know. If you don't know, don't explain. But then when you don't know something, you know that's something you can then go away and study. So you can keep a list of questions. I got stumped on this question. What do I need to do to go away and learn about it? Okay? And the apologists that are in the church, we're like the white blood cells of the body of Christ. If you're stuck, go to an apologist. Go to an evangelist who does apolog apologetics. So evangelism, get involved in the evangelism that your church is doing. I don't, I don't actually have a church. Well, that's something that we need to do. And that brings me nicely to the seventh discipline. And the seventh discipline is living in community. Now, living in community is perfected by living life with other people. Living life with other people means that you live life together on top of one another. You know? You live life one on top of the other. You share burdens. You rejoice together. You mourn together at the common disaster. You support one another in times of trouble. You stand with one another in solidarity. You are part of the people of God. You're not British anymore. You're a Christian. Which means that the cause of the Christians in Nigeria and Pakistan is now more important to you than the cause of Britain and the state. Yeah? That is now who we are. We, we are we've a new nation. We're citizens together in a heavenly kingdom. Not citizens of this worldly kingdom. Now, because we've put off the old and we're putting on the new. Now, if you can't live in close-knit community with other Christians, you have to knock it down a notch. Because Christian ethics is all about perfections, achieving perfections. Yeah? So you knock it down a notch if you can't achieve a perfection. And that means that if you can't live in close-knit community with other Christians, then you try to do it with the Christians on your street. But say they're not on the same page as you. That means that you do what most Christians do and you try to live out these values at your Sunday gathering by keeping in touch with one another during the week. Now, it's, that to me is three notches down from where we should be. But it's still better than nothing. There are no Lone Ranger Christians. None. You have to live in community. That means that you've got to deal with difficult people. The church is a family. Jesus said, call it a family. That means that you're, every other Christian 
is a brother to you, or a sister to you, or a cousin, or a distant auntie, third removed. <laughs> right? That's what you mean, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. It, just because we're family doesn't mean that I have the right to get hold of your credit card and the keys to your house. Sure, sure. Yeah. If you met a third cousin, distant removed, who's related to you by blood, that doesn't entitle them to your bank details. Yes, that's true, that's true. And, and, and it's true within the spiritual family of the church. Sure. But as you go in in your spiritual walk, you'll encounter people who become as dear to you as a brother. And those that are older than you in the faith that become your spiritual counselors, your spiritual fathers or mothers, you'll call them spiritual father, spiritual mother. And then you'll meet Christians for the first time who you don't know, and they're more like cousins. And the, the, what they're entitled to is a down payment on social currency. So in other words, you give them a reasonable measure of trust and a reasonable measure of support and help just because they said, I am a Christian. Yeah? yeah. Reasonable, i.e. not putting yourself at unnecessary risk. Yeah. Yeah. You've given them a download mm -hmm. of social currency that they can either waste or invest. Right. And if they invest, you come a bit closer. Yeah? yeah. But, but those, and then as you get older in the faith, in decades to come, you might meet other Christians who become spiritual children to you, spiritual sons or spiritual daughters. Mm -hmm. And so we use the matrix of the family to think about the church. But if a family member is in trouble, what do you do? You help them out. Yeah. If your brother needs your help, what do you do? You go and help them out. I'm talking about your familiar brother. Yeah. You'd help them. You help, go and help them out. Yeah. yeah. Right? So, and if someone squanders all of that, then they're like the black sheep of the family. They're still part of your family. You don't deny. Sure. You don't judge them. You don't say, because you did this to me, you're not a Christian. But you go, a bit like many families have their black sheep. It's kind of like, well, I can't, I can't work with you. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah? So you've got to live in community. So that's seven disciplines. Prayer, fasting, almsgiving, study of the faith, self-examination, evangelism, living in community. And these things will make your spirit, they will help you in your spiritual journey. And as, the, and as your job changes or as your life circumstances change, don't be frightened about changing the rhythm. You're the one setting the rhythm. So if you need to change it, you need to change it. Because you're working out your salvation with fear and trembling. I'm not working it out for you. Yeah? yeah? Mm -hmm. So you've got to work it out. Yeah. You've got to work it out. What does it mean to be a disciple of Jesus in this context? Okay? Yeah. Now just one a, a Brucey bonus for you. In terms of Christian morality, mm -hmm. we follow what's called virtue ethics. So study virtue ethics as one of the extra things you need to study. And think about moral questions through the prism of virtue. Okie dokie? Yeah. And I would encourage you to learn the chivalric code, because okay. that's a virtuous code. Okay. All right. Does that help, bro? That does help, yeah. It's... Any follow-on questions? Um, you know, it, it was, it, it's, it's been, like, pretty difficult, because, like, you know, it's not something that, like, a lot of people really, like, get. Do you know what I mean? Like, friends and stuff, or, like, you know, when you, when you tell them that, like, oh, like, Christian, it's like, yeah. You lose friends. Yeah. Yes, bro, that is sadly going to happen. Yeah. I, every Christian I know has lost friends. Because it makes no sense. Like, because you know, because the pluralists, these people who preach tolerance, they don't have tolerance in their heart. Tolerance is a virtue signaling soundbite. It isn't an ethic of virtue. Oh, I love that. It's so true. It's so true. And so all of these people show the hypocrisy of their atheistic ideology that they preach tolerance to us about homosexuality or transgenderism or Islam, but then when we say we're Christians, they disown us. The world will reject you. It's a sign that you're following Jesus. So don't rejoice when you suffer or are persecuted for the sake of the Lord. Rejoice because this is a sign that you're a disciple of Jesus. And find those friendships in the body of Christ to help you grow. Yeah, I suppose that's <coughs> That's one of the harder things is like, because because I don't know, I literally don't know anyone that's Christian really. Like, right. That I know well enough to be like, where do you go to church? And I, you know, I don't know how to tell if it's like, you know, a church that's like sort of sticks to sort of like the truth, because I know that there's a lot of sort of like, sort of like soy boy -y like churches yeah. and all this like prosperity gospel and yeah. all that nonsense. So I don't, I don't really know how to like discern what is like, the, a good church, you know what I mean. That's what yeah. I, mean. so that's I can. I can give you. I can give you a quick answer to that. 
Check if they believe in the Nicene Creed. The Nicene Constantinopolitan Creed. If they can affirm that they do, yeah. it means it's a Christian church. Cool. And if they don't, then... You run. Sure. You run a mile. Yeah. <laughs> right? But the thing about the church is, is think about it like a, 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 an organic plant. There are branches that are alive mm -hmm. and there are branches that are dead. Many fellowships are part of the church, but they're dead branches. Sure. They're not up to much. Mm -hmm. They're not doing much. Yeah. Those churches that are alive are the ones that are pursuing the agenda of God. Yeah. They're pursuing evangelism. They're pursuing justice as defined by Christianity. They are seeking to disciple people. They are passionate about prayer. They are passion they're devoted to prayer. They're devoted to the apostolic teaching. They, they dig deep into what the apostles teach. They are devoted to the sacraments, the breaking of bread. They are devoted to one another, the fellowship. Those are the four signs of a good church. Look for them, right? No church is perfect. Every church is going to be approximation of what perfect looks like. So you find the best you can and you join that one. So I'll recommend some churches to you right now. So these are all churches that I know. These are all churches that I, I feel confident to send someone to. All Souls in Langham Place. Um, St. Helen's Bishopgate, Kensington Temple, um, St. Mark's Coptic Church, um, St. Patrick's Roman Catholic Church in Soho, um, let's have a think, any Orthodox Church, any Orthodox Church, Georgian Orthodox Church, Russian Orthodox Church, the Russian Orthodox Church abroad, the Russian Orthodox Church official, like, like, an, any Orthodox Church, okay. yeah? Um, so you've got a bunch right there. Another one would be um, the London Tabernacle in Elephant and Castle, yeah? So you've got a whole bunch of churches. Go to all of them, see which one feeds your soul. The one that feeds your soul, stay there until you're full of what it feeds you. Hopefully it'll be dynamic, so you'll, it's always changing what it feeds you, so you'll always be nutrition. But some churches, sadly, they get stuck in a rut of teaching. Right, 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 I see what you mean. Like, that's a criticism of a lot of Hillsong. They get stuck in a rut of teaching, and it's milk all the time, it's milk. Sure. Yeah? Um, you know, uh, um, Holy Trinity Brompton would be an example of such a church. Yeah, and so you get to a point where it's kind of like you hear it again and again, it's always the same thing, and you stop being fed. And then you start to feel hungry again. Sure. And, and that's, that's when you know it's time to go to a different fellowship. Yeah? But if you find a really good fellowship, you'll never, all, have, to you'll never have to leave. Okay. Any other questions? Um. You know, it's funny because I had a suspicion that I would be thinking, speaking to a new Christian today. I did, honestly. So here you go. For new Christians. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you very much. Yeah. What else did I want to ask you? Um, oh yeah, I just wanted to actually say like, say, I wanted to say thank you because your videos that I've watched have like, because I, I'm studying philosophy at the moment, not at uni, but hopefully I'll go to uni and study philosophy, but like your videos have really like opened my eyes, they've helped me sort of like defend, you know, the faith like a lot, you know, really well to a lot of my friends. Yeah. Like my two best friends are, are Jewish, so, you know, when I told them that was interesting, but like I've been able to like answer like a lot of their questions Thanks, Peter God. and stuff, yeah. mainly because of you and, and the work that you and JC do. And your videos. And, Thanks be to God. Um, I wanted to ask if you could, if you, if you could pray for me. Yes, like, of course. Okay. Yes, absolutely. I'm going to hold on to my coat. I'm not fine. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to close my eyes because in this place you can't trust. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So, okay, let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for my brother. I thank you, Lord, for the grace and the mercy that you bestowed upon him. I thank you, Father, for the work of your blessed and holy Spirit that has brought him to glorify your Son so that he might worship you, that he might participate in that divine interaction between Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I pray, Father, that, that you confirm him and seal him in truth, that you build him up, and that you guide into his life, Lord, every blessing, grace, and virtue, that every encounter that he has helps him to grow more into your image, and that you will place around him 
beside him, behind him and in front of him, those who will encourage him and strengthen him in the faith so that he might glorify you here on earth with his life as a living sacrifice until the end of his days, that as he meets you upon the day of judgment, you might say to him, my good and faithful servant, here is your reward. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two. Yeah? Want to take a minute? Ooh. The best decision of your life. And the worst. It's been pretty hard. I can imagine it has been, bro. I can imagine it has been. You know, when people reject you, all they're doing is rejecting a blessing in their own life. Because a Christian in your life is a blessing. And if they've rejected you, they have rejected the one who sent you. They've rejected Christ himself. So just dust off the sandals from your feet and God will hold them to account for that rejection. And in the meantime, bro, I really want to encourage you to, to get with other Christians. You're going to meet some wonderful people. You're also going to meet some assholes. As you do. As you do. Yeah. Because you find the two in everything. Yeah. Right? So try to cut out, try to stay as away from as many of the assholes as possible. Yeah. Try to cultivate into your life as many of the good people. And any that is weak, meet them with patience and kindness. Yeah? You know? Do, do connect. Is your family Christian? No. Okay. My dad's Jewish and my mum's sort of like an atheist. So oh, wow. Also. I don't know. My brother, like, they're sort of like more materialists, I think. Yeah. Kind of. You know, they just sort of yeah. do that. Well, if, if ever, brother, if ever I can support you, this is an honest offer and it's also an offer to anyone else, I am your servant in the Lord. Just, just, you know who I am. You know where to find me on a Sunday. Come and grab me. If it's really urgent, be forceful because sometimes I can't always I know you've got people harassing yeah, you exactly people so, so be forceful get my attention because sometimes I miss people I did last week right and then and then and then I'll do what I can to help you reach out to me thank you all right bro and congratulations again remember at this corner the Dawa teams are looking for fodder they, they don't worry they don't get me because yeah. they, it doesn't make any sense that like the, the Muslim, uh, the Jesus in the Quran, written 600 years after the actual Jesus. Of history. Yeah, how is that, like, in any way, logically supposed to be historically accurate? Yeah. It's just not possible. It doesn't. And you're absolutely right. But what I'm saying is, I want to encourage you to, if you come here on a regular basis, to just be a listener. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, I think this is And my if people try to engage you in debate, just say, I'm, I'm only here to listen. Yeah, yeah. All right. Peace with you, bro. God Thank bless you. Thank you so much. All right. I'll be Take back. Care. I'll be back. You'll see me in the yeah, future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. You look after yourself. God bless you, Bob. Thank you. God bless you. JC, that was a new brother who's just come to the faith. He's just become a Christian. So just to prove to you guys that people are becoming Christians because of what we're doing, there was an atheist Jew who's just become a Christian. Thanks be to God. And our videos helped him to make that journey. What more wrap-up do you need? Angels are celebrating in heaven because the church grows. Jesus is Lord. Praise the Lord. God!